Welcome YouTube, Bobby G here. Today I want to discuss UV lights. So let's talk. What I want to show you uh, is just to start off with is how I installed my UV light. It's a Core Life uh, Twist Turbo Twist 6X and uh, for those of you that don't know, I have a 75 gallon uh, tank that I use it on. I connected the sterilizer uh, in line with the output of the Fluval uh, 305. And when I did that, I tested the water flow uh, coming out of the, uh, the spout in the aquarium. And uh, Ironically, it measured at just over 100 gallons an hour. Now, if you do the research on the 6X, um, it suggests that for it to clear the water and also kill uh, freeborn bacteria, uh, like ick, for example, uh, it can't have a flow rate more than 110 gallons per hour. So again, to my surprise, uh, the Fluval 305 uh, worked out perfect for this purpose. When I initially installed the UV light, I was in a little bit of a hurry, which is never really a good thing. And uh, I didn't put a whole lot of thought into how I was going to service it or the filter in the future. So, here I am back at it. Um, I had to cut some of the hosing that I had plumbed in for it. And I'm gonna show you uh, the revision on it and how I think it's best uh, hooked up for my scenario anyways. Part of the reason that I hooked it up the way I did initially was I was trying to have as few uh, cuts in the line, as few joints as possible because I'm terrified of a leak and uh, so it's been running for a number of weeks now uh, and there hasn't been any leaks so I feel very confident in the fittings that I've used and the methods I've used to uh, hook it up and I feel fairly confident in putting a couple splices in it uh, or disconnects in it to allow me to service the filter and the light. So let's take a minute and uh, I'll show you just how I've done that. So for this project, I purchased some tubing from Home Depot. And what this is, is it's 5 8 ID and 3 quarter OD. So essentially it's a 1 16th uh, inch uh, wall on it. So it's, it's very flexible. It's not quite as stiff as, as the normal hose that we're using for our aquariums. But it turned out to be uh, really the only thing that would fit on this fluoval uh, and, and uh, enabled me to put it on the, the barb and to tighten the, the uh, locking collar down on it. The heavier tubing that we generally use for our siphon hoses and, and stuff uh, is, is too thick and therefore the, the uh, locking nut here um, won't slide up over top of it and therefore you can't tighten it on. Uh, I've bought in some PEX elbows. Uh, they're actually intended for household plumbing um, for the, the water lines on household plumbing. Uh, I think they're listed, they're listed at three quarter inch elbows. I'm not sure where they get that uh, three quarter uh, inch designation because they they fit the 5 8 ID tubing perfectly. Uh, the other fittings that I've purchased are uh, a couple uh, regular garden hose um, uh, attachments so that I can uh, sorry so that I can uh, you know, undo the lines when I need to. Uh, you can see that I've chosen 
brass fittings over plastic fittings. Um, that's just me being worried about uh, the potential of a, a plastic fitting breaking. So I would rather spend a little bit extra money and get something that I uh, can feel a little bit more certain with. Okay, so if we have a closer look at this, um, you can see that I, I plumbed this in direct into the UV sterilizer. Uh, and also this, this line here, which is the uh, output line, uh, was also direct right to the output. So uh, I was worried about leaks, uh, but I've uh, come to find out that there's only one way to service this and take it out. So. I've already added the uh, fitting to this end and the other end at the aquarium. And uh, in this case right here, this tubing didn't really want to bend around this corner that well, so it's kinked. Now, <clears throat> uh, I think the water flow would be a bit better. And that's why I bought these PEX fittings, elbows. I'm going to cut the line. And I do have to worry about uh, the uh, headroom I've got in my cabinet so I'm going to cut this one very close uh, to the, the nipple here uh, and ba basically just giving myself enough room to put the elbow on. So it looks like I need about uh, three quarters of an inch so if we cut it about here that's going to go Go ahead and cut it. It's very easy to cut. And we will place our elbow on that right there. And I'll push it down as far as it can go. Uh, you, can, you can see that it was a, a snug fit. I use zip ties down here because I was afraid to collapse the plastic. Uh, but in this case, uh, I did buy some uh, some gear clamps, so I will just slide that on there. Should have put it on first, but no big deal. Just gotta undo it a little bit to get it around the elbow. There we go. And I will snug that up. It doesn't have to be overly tight. It's not like we've got a system that has, a, you know, a ton of pressure. So uh, I think if I run that about like that, that should be pretty good. I was actually going to put two in line, uh, two elbows. Snug that up there. That hose is never going to come off of there. Never going to leak. Um, and I can push this as far as it can go. And I will tighten this one up. Snug that one up again. It doesn't have to be too terribly tight. And then here we're going to uh, make a splice to put our fittings in. So we'll just splice one more uh, male-female garden hose ends, basically, into the line. Uh, I'm going to choose to do it below the level of my bin. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. I suppose if it was a high pressure leak, it would, you know, could squirt out here and, and end up out of the bin. But uh, in this case, I'm going to put it below the, uh, the level of the bin, the top. And I'm also going to uh, do this in such a way that I don't make a mistake and hook up this line to this, um, which I suppose is you know, possible, but let's let's uh, put these in so that I'm not apt to make that mistake. Uh, so that would mean if I put this one on the bottom and this on top, and this is undone, there's obviously no way I could 
attach these two. So let's do it that way. So we'll lift that to line up a little bit there. Uh, snip it off. Like so. Just like that. There's a nice rubber gasket inside these fittings. Another benefit of buying the brass once you come with a, a decent washer. And we'll just tighten this on here. Again, I think I could use a zip tie, uh, but I have these gear clamps and uh, so I will make use of them. And obviously for this end, we will put the other fitting. And of course there's no way I could do this. I like to try to make things as uh, idiot-proof idiot as possible because I'm prone to making mistakes. So there you have it. We can, we can tighten this up here like so. Now again, I don't want to over tighten this. I just want to snug it up. About like that. I feel pretty confident that's not going to leak. So there you have it. There's my uh, UV sterilizer uh, set up. Following this, I'm going to put this back in the aquarium and I will uh, go over some of the benefits that I have seen with using the UV sterilizer. Maybe it will help you decide whether you want one or not. UV sterilizer pros and cons. The pros first. When used properly, they kill waterborne microorganisms, parasites, bacteria, and free-floating algae. This can aid in the controlling the spread of disease from fish to fish and also greatly improve water clarity. After installing the sterilizer within a week, I noticed my water clarity had improved. Although the clarity was already good, the sterilizer took it to the next level. For anyone looking for that fish floating in air look, this is a great aid. I've also noticed the algae growth on the glass, rocks, etc. has been greatly reduced. As far as fish health, I have not had any breakouts of disease since installation. Some months ago, I had a spread of ick, which resulted in the loss of a few fish. I expect the UV light would have prevented this, or at least prevented the spread of it. Following the installation, I feel a sense of peace of mind. Now for the cons. I can only think of two cons. First is the initial cost of the UV light and the upcoming cost of replacement bulbs. And second is the added maintenance required in keeping it clean. In summary, I think the pros of using UV light greatly outweigh the cons and therefore think it is worth considering for your aquarium. If you've enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and share. And as always, make your today fantastic.